Hey. Okay, hello. Hey, honey, how are you doing? I'm doing good, missing you. Yeah. Um, we were just talking about our game against each other on our, around our birthday. Um, I can't wait to see you, actually. You can't? Well, I can't wait to see you either. I literally, it's, it's getting me so excited. Well, people will be able to tell us apart because um, I'll be tanner than you, so that'll be good. Okay, whatever. People have to tell us apart somehow in the field, other than our uniforms. I think they'll be able to tell us apart because I'm way faster than you. All right, yeah, maybe. <laughs> Not anymore. No, no, no. I've been, I'm a year out of surgery. I'm good now. I don't want the whole, like, one person's kind of rooting for Florida, one person's kind of rooting for Navy. Like, I kind of want, like, you know, split in line, like, mom and dad being, like, competitive, like, back and forth to each other. I think that'd be funny. I just want the loud family members. I'll take grandpa. Okay, you can, ha in your fantasy, you can have dad's side of the family and I'll have moms. <laughs> okay, that sounds pretty good. Champions aren't born, they're built for the Cornell Big Red and the Florida Gators. Expectations have never been higher, with only one goal in mind. Let's go! Game time! It's in the back, you better believe it. We all play for one reason, show out dominating this season. It's time! Take that dub with us, so we leaving. You not with us in the streets, and Braveheart turn it up uh, for the season. We giving our all. Get up when we fall. Yes. We stand for each other and answer the call. Whether bigger or small. No matter the reason we can't make a ball. No matter the side, we run through the wall. Calm demeanor like John Senior. Through the long season, got them all sleeping. By the fourth quarter, you can hear them hard breathing. They be doing long dreaming. But this field here is our region. No odds and evens, just our reasons. To send y'all packing to the off season. Ah. It's passion. It's the process. It's the season. 2019. Every season has a cycle, and as the warmer temperatures in upstate New York begin to melt the snow, the new cycle of lacrosse season is upon us. With some of the country's best offensive weapons returning, there is a reason to be optimistic in Ithaca. Ball and extended to the left is Piatelli. Skip pass, right, T! Here comes Cornell. They'll bring it down with Salvatore. Blast it home! The Big Red outscored Lehigh 7 to nothing in the fourth. After opening the season with a pair of wins over Hobart and Lehigh, Cornell returned home to their first big test, welcoming Albany to Shoalcaw Field. It was a challenge that would require all members of the Big Red to come together. Hey, it's about us, right? Let's just make sure we stay focused on us, what we're doing, being positive, being supportive, taking care of everybody in this group. 50-man mission, boys. All right, let's go protect Georgie's house. Flurry starting to cascade down at Shulkoff Field. Temperatures in the low 30s, and the wing play battle is on off the faceoff. Early on, both teams flex their offensive muscle. John Piatelli, who shoots a laser high about 10 yards straight away. Patty's got to step out. What's the Tie ball game, Sean Eccles. Hey, those wings got to step out and got to be looking for the lane. Hands, hands, hands. Go ahead, Ryan. Feed it left to the doorstep. Gorgeous setup, and Telesco will finish. He wraps around, goes low for his third goal of the quarter. And for every Cornell goal, Albany had an answer. Shooting low, scoring is Kyle Casey. As the score increased, so too did the intensity, until it was Captain Clark Peterson who ended up on the receiving end. What's down in here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right there? Uh-huh. Hey, listen, face-offs are face-offs. If we're not winning that draw, that's not the end of the world. It's not the last time, it's not the first time we've ever been there, okay? But it does mean that we got to compete better on the loose balls. We do a better job on the defensive end, determining the direction the ball is going. That's a pretty big swing. Get to the goal. Attack the goal. If you get a shot, put it on frame. Okay? I'm not saying we got to get volume shots here, but we got to attack the middle. We got to get to the goal. Communicate, support each other, and attack everything. Loose balls, everything. One ball at a time, boys. Just one ball at a time. So Albany got just what they wanted. A tightly played first half. Little swim move. Fletcher did the swim. Wingman sweep, shoot, scores. Cuts it to a two-goal, 11-9 Cornell advantage. Two things we got to do to finish this game the right way. We're going to fight for loose balls. We got to stay out of the box. 
pinch and pop. Graham till race towards the bank. He'll shoot and he'll score the first of his Cornell career, Graham. Teat with a little one-hand flip pass to Pianto. It's a big red ball. Great job digging out a little bit there, all right? Good gut check, responded a little bit, all right? But it's nowhere near done. We've got a lot more loose balls we got to fight for. A big run by Cornell provided a five goal cushion in the fourth. But Albany would make one last effort to come back. Albany looking to cut it to a one goal. I think a lot of that's. Bergmaster. We're down to a minute 20 in regulation. It's a one goal Cornell lead. Bergmaster ties the game, his second of the afternoon. Cornell does not have timeout. We're down to 25 seconds in regulation. Tied at 16 apiece. Fletcher barreling right down the alley. Bounce shot, it's in! Connor Fletcher with 13 seconds to go! Cornell holds off a furious comeback. A goal by Connor Fletcher with 13 seconds to play has given Cornell an enormous win. I was still kind of in shock. I was a uh... That was a great game. Uh, you know, nothing better than getting a win on the cough, so just can't wait to get back out of this week. 1,100 miles to the south, the Florida Gators prepared for their own early season test against second-ranked Maryland. Tonight is another opportunity to define what Florida lacrosse is. Tonight we walk off the field not saying, I would've, I could've, I should've, but instead we walk off saying, I did my very best. It was Maryland who would start fast, racing to a lead. Down five, Florida looked to answer. Haas going to goal and she finds the back of the net again. This is Brecka coming around and Brecka's got a goal. And Florida responds with three straight. But while the Gators could get close, Maryland refused to let them equalize. Jen Giles, oh my goodness. Oh wow, Lindsey Ronbeck. We just have to continue, continue to push yeah. and push and push. Yeah. Inside and there's a goal. Lindsey Ronbeck finds the back of the net. There's a goal for Florida. Haas is on the board again. their 17th goal. In the end, a career-high eight goals from Lindsey Ronbeck was not enough. It was a clear example for the Gators as to where they needed to improve. I think just playing a full 60 minutes, right? We got down, we come back, and then we're content with where we are, right? At that point, we gotta keep pushing and fighting and getting up, make them have that comeback. Did we lose? Yeah. I mean, we, didn't, we didn't beat that team, right? They're a good team. They're a great team. But as, as we walk along this whole journey, the fact is, like, we have to know we are resilient, all right? We are fighters, okay? And so that's on the positive. Lots of time to improve, all right? So let's get at it, all right? Take care of your bodies and let's get ready to work. So we got here. here. For senior defenseman Kaysen Tarbell, afternoons are spent a little differently than his teammates. This is my daughter, Issa Selena Tarbell. Her English name is Quill. <laughs> She's a little shy right now. Oh, you like this? Is this what you painted? Yeah. He hopes to pass down the lessons of lacrosse, which have always been ingrained in his culture. Lacrosse is huge. Where I grew up, you know, everybody 
owns a lacrosse stick, everybody's in that in their backyard. Uh, coming from a Native American community, you know, we hear that lacrosse is a medicine game. It's a tradition, our ancestors created it. After missing the 2018 season with an injury, Tarbell returns for his final season as the most experienced member of the team. Let's go, let's go, see it, see it Fleet, get there, good. Same thing, next time on Cobb, next time on Cobb. Drive him, see that, ball, 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 get out, get out, get out, get out. Good. While Kaysen has logged the most time on the field, the true elder statesman of the Big Red comes from an entirely different background. This is my certificate from passing sniper school. Um, something that means a lot, I think, to any of us. I, th I think even more than that, um, when you pass, you get what's called a hog's tooth. So every sniper wears one of these. Traditionally, they take it from the chamber of the first enemy sniper they kill. That's the whole uh, idea that it's the bullet that's meant for you, so you keep it close. For 28-year-old walk-on junior Hunter Hughes, the journey to Cornell has been anything but traditional. Got into lacrosse uh, the first year that they had it out in my town on the West Coast as a sixth grader and uh, played through high school. When I was done with high school, I, I joined the military instead. I joined the Marine Corps. I've always been kind of the person that looks for a challenge and I thought it was the hardest. They have a reputation and I wanted to be a part of that. Went to boot camp did infantry training, got to my first unit, and uh, almost, probably within a month and a half, was in Iraq. Not only did he want to be a part of the team, he wanted to lead, and soon saw his inspiration for becoming a sniper. And there's a, uh, a group of about four guys, Oakley sunglasses on, long hair that's, that had to be out of regulation, um, standing there, you know, either, either tanning on the ground or doing 225 pound clean press. Uh, on our helipad, and, and I'm thinking to myself, who are these guys? You know, I want to do that. Those men were snipers, and after two years of intense training among some of the top talent in the military, Hunter achieved his goal. We had six SEALs with us, three passed. We had other guys who had been in sniper platoons for two years, already doing all this stuff and practicing, um, but it's, you know, it's challenging. It's just hard to pass. So when you do, you know, that culmination of all that work and all that kind of, you know, all that pain, I guess you'd say, yeah, I'd say it's the biggest accomplishment I've ever had in my life. Hunter would serve four tours of duty around the world, eventually returning to California with a renewed sense of purpose for his studies and lacrosse. A buddy of mine got me to come out to a pickup lacrosse game down in Glendale. People would meet there every Sunday, and they've been doing that since like 2008. And it was just a ton of fun. I, I dug out all my old lacrosse gear. It was all, you know, pretty much falling apart. And I forgot about how much I enjoyed uh, lacrosse. Yet it was another twist of fate that made his two passions finally collide. I was coaching a high school lacrosse team last spring, and I was applying to colleges, and I got into Cornell. One of the kids on my lacrosse team found out and uh, spread it around to the team, and, and so then this whole idea of me trying out started. After arriving on campus in the fall, Hughes became one of two walk-ons to earn a spot on the team, where he hopes his attitude can have a unique influence on his teammates. I am absolutely not the best player on this team, nor do I expect myself to be, but I do expect myself to try harder than anyone else out there. It isn't ever something that I would have thought I'd be doing, but I love that I am. And uh, to be able to put on that, you know, put on that jersey every day and go out there and be able to just go at it with those guys, there's, there's not much better than that. I just want to be, be able to set an example of work ethic and, you know, putting in that time. In the real general sense, boys, there's a lot of details in this scout, and a lot of them are going to be irrelevant um, if we're not winning ground balls. Okay, I've been, I've been presenting it to you guys so far this season and, and telling you that the possession battle is going to be a difference maker for us and, and we haven't won it. It's not your stick that picks it up, it's your legs that get you there. If we win ground balls, we'll win the possession battle, we'll have an opportunity to get the ball on our end of the field, protect our defense, probably the face-offs will work out, our, work out in our favor, but I'm just most, I'm most concerned about how hard you guys are going to work for something that you know is difficult.
Next up for the Big Red is the Crown Lacrosse Classic in Charlotte, where they will face two top five opponents in Penn State and Towson. Coach Milliman knows the challenge is as much mental as it is physical. Early on, things did not go Cornell's way. Nine first quarter goals gave Penn State a commanding lead. This is a challenge, as hard as it gets. Go hard, go at them. Despite the large deficit, the Big Red worked to gain momentum. Second half, Cornell rallied to cut the lead. But in the end, the Big Red simply ran out of time. We're four games in, and we are so much better than what we're doing right now. I'm going to put it this clearly. We're playing hard on the defensive end of the field, but the level of discipline, it's not helping us defend, and it's not helping us outplay the other team. I'm calling you out in that regard so that you understand what I see as a coach. That part bothers me and will be addressed. I'm not yelling at you, I'm not coming down, I'm just telling you the level of discipline that we play with is not winning games. We're outscoring other teams right now. That's the only difference between us right now and being 0-4. That's the difference. We outscore teams. I don't want to celebrate that. I want to be able to respect that by the way we play the rest of the game. Agree to be that team. Agree to be the team that just says, nope, you're not getting in the middle. Again, I'll tell you this one more time. I know you're trying. Effort is not the issue. I know for a fact you guys want to be different than that. I know for a fact you guys want to be different than that. We are too good of lacrosse players. We are too good as a team. We care too much about this program and what we're capable of to, to continue to play a version that has any hint of selfishness in it, any hint. We have a lot more ahead of us. Just like I say in games, just like I say at timeouts and in quarters, all we can do is refocus. Whatever just happened is gone and turn our attention to the next play. Because once we figure out how to play relentless, Without any hesitation, the only thing left is stringing it together. Bring it up here real quick. All right, I know this one sucks. This is part of the journey. Put this in the Rolodex. Let's move forward, all right? Together on three. 50-man mission, the guys that are back at home too, thinking about them right now, all right? Together on three. One, two, three. Together. As Florida travels north to meet Navy, the game holds special significance to junior Brianna Harris. I remember showing up to the hotel for Under Armour All America and she, she gave me a letter. She was like, open this when you get there. She wrote me this whole letter like, this is your first sporting event where I won't be there. And I want you to know that you can, you can do this. You're gonna be fine, you're gonna be amazing. And I remember reading that, thinking, wow, this really is our first sports event, not together. And I, I bawled on the spot. Brianna and Kayla were born identical twins and have shared an athletic journey since the beginning. I was always right behind her and it was just so, so annoying. And um, I think that always pushed me to do better because I think without her, I wouldn't have pushed myself as hard as I could have. And you know, who knows, I might not have ended up at University of Florida. As college recruiting kicked into full gear, it was Kayla who suggested they go their separate ways so they each could flourish individually. I'll never forget it. She committed before I did. I was really taking my time with my options. Like, oh, do I want to go here? Do I want to go there? I wanted to visit everything that, every place that offered me. But Kayla committed, I want to say, a full year before I did. And she committed to the Naval Academy, and that's our hometown. But, so of course, I was considering, you know, Navy. And she committed, and the first thing she said to me was, if you commit to the Naval Academy, I'm decommitting, and I'm never talking to you again. Because we def she really, really more than me wanted to like kind of find herself, you know, grow up and be an individual because we've always been in the same sports, same friend group, same classes again. And she wanted to really like separate. Despite the distance, the twins remain as close as ever, even sharing a sort of twin sense. Bye. Bye. 
it goes a lot farther than that. Like um, actually the day that I tore my ACL last year, she was at LaxCon and Kayla actually, she told me this afterhand, she had to step out because her knee hurt so bad. While this head-to-head -head meeting is three years in the making, that doesn't keep the sisters from socializing together the night before the game. Brandon will be telling stories about Florida. Kayla will be telling stories about Navy to each other. I don't think they're listening to a word either, <laughs> either one saying, but they just want to tell their stories. On game day, it was all business for both squads. Early on, the physical style of play was evident. Two yellow cards for Florida's Sydney Pereca cost the Gators their captain. Navy made one final push before the half. We can't stand and watch. There are, they're doubling, and then we have opportunities in the middle. We just have to be really good about getting them there. Early in the second half, Florida established a rhythm, taking the lead. Yet Navy refused to go away. In the final moments, the Gators struggled to hang on. It was a bitter defeat, one that Coach O'Leary can only hope her players learn from. We all are in this. We all just lost to Navy. Should we have lost to Navy? Not up by five goals. Not up by five goals. I think we're worried about our own individual person. We don't want our player to score. Well, our team just lost. We, all of us in this room, we lost. We're gonna to try to figure it out. We'll do our very best, but you guys need to figure it out too. Back in Charlotte, Cornell looked within as they prepared to rebound against the top ranked team in the country. One deep breath together. One more for the rest of our boys that aren't here right now. You know those guys want this as bad as we do, right? They're back at home. They're thinking about this too, right? 50 man mission. Attack mode first, ask questions later, all right? One plate at a time, one ground ball at a time. Let's have a day. Together on three. One, two, three. Yeah. And although they fell behind early, the Big Red stayed aggressive, led by Captain Clark Peterson's indomitable will. Hey, great job. Boys, one plate at a time. All right, that's it. Together on three. One, two, three. Yeah. Let's go. When the dust settled, Cornell had built a comfortable lead with eight of their goals from Peterson. The difference in the game right now is your guys' commitment to just selling out and making plays. Don't care if they win or not, just commit to making the play. That'll, that'll put us in a position to be the aggressor, to be in attack mode, and to be us. as we were on Friday, and when I said that we stood in this exact same spot, I said, remember this one, because this is the other side of it, okay? And here we are, we show what we can do. Keep your focus, together on three. One, two, three. Yeah. Yeah.